Hello everyone. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about um, portions of Basil 3. Okay, It's more of a revision from Basil 1 and Basil 2. At least they were saying that it had re revised problems from Basil 1 and Basil 2. But really in a sense that it, it hadn't done none of the none of the sort. It's actually made things more complicated. Um, but from what I see is that the um, risk capital requirements, okay, when it comes to terms with the reserve requirement within Basel 3, you also have the buffer zone, which is no more than an additional um, you know, buffer in case your capital requirements and principal liquidity starts to get eaten, eaten into during times when banks have these problems, okay, like they had a while back, they say Basel III is this, you know, the best thing that ever happened to banking. Well, it really ain't going to do anything because the outstanding risks that you have, um, such as we all seen before Basel III and so forth with subprime uh, mortgage and so forth, and it spilled into the primes and then everything kind of cascaded from there, if you will. What you have is where I see the problems coming in the foreseen somewhat midterm to short term future is that, and you're kind of starting to see a little bit of it right now, um, the economy is going to look as if it is so called actually recovering. It may look like that, but the underlying fact is, is that the unemployment rolls have dropped off okay and if you're unemployed and so forth and you're off these rolls guess what the government don't care about you unfortunately okay um, that's why they say and they can say I guess in a sense that we are recovering you know it's it's a complete joke okay so if you're not part of the system anymore you don't count basically but getting back to Basel 3 and what I see coming with this type of a program. And Mike Baloney hit it right on the head. It's 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 a complete joke. Okay. And I'll explain my portions and reasons why and tied in with what I foresee coming. First off, the risk requirement capital, um, which is no more than the risk zone, that they have to have their reserves set aside in a sense for their fractional reserves, which is in a sense kind of different based upon depositors amount. Then you have buffer zone, which is supposed to be just an additional capital zone, uh, which would avoid eating into the principal liquidity um, and, in a sense, some equity base of banks. So what I what I see happening is these Alte Verde and Option Arm A and B mortgage loans and some commercials, once they start to reset because of inflation starting to come into the system and publicly known inflation coming into the system what you're going to see is banks are going to start to lend more okay they're going to start to lend some so the the risk appetite is going to go down it's going to blow this bubble bigger in a sense that once these interest rate sensitive loans start to reset that's when you have the floor drop out and a lot of stuff's going to come crashing down because of the way basil 3 is set up banks will not be able to maintain the status quo if you will of basil 3 requirements and how how that all is mixed together um, so the very interesting point to make out of all this is once this happens once all this these interest rate sensitive loans start to reset with inflation coming in is the Fed going to raise interest rates right probably not because if they do the whole floor is going to drop right out but guess what if they keep interest rates the same as they are you're going to have runaway inflation so really no matter how you look at it we're in a stalemate position you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't that's where we're at right now you know it's not any more complicated than just simply saying that 
Um, so the question is, is at that point in time, once those interest rate loans start to reset, will the Fed, in conjunction with the government, will they want to have some type of easing or monetization or stimulus, bailout? You never know what these guys are going to do. And ladies, I should say, for that fact. Um, if they decide to intervene in that type of situation, <clears throat> the Fed, in a sense, is already, um, they already don't have the capital. They're already stretched to the limit. So once this takes place, um, it's going to have massive ripple effects, not just here in the United States, but worldwide. Um, at that point in time, do um, you think other people are going to want to buy our uh, bonds? Because at that point in time, the bond market's going to be in a bubble. What do you think will be more important for the, the uh, Federal Reserve and the FOMC board at that point in time? Do you think they're going to want to monetize in the bond market and treasuries? Or do you think they're going to, going to want to take care of the, the banking crisis, the second major wave of the bankers, banking crisis, because of the uh, insufficiencies of Basel III not making banks increase their capital requirements significantly? Not just this 2 to 4.5% we're talking about. Um, they have a Pillar 2. Pillar 2 banks are actually using the Pillar 2 system to where they can basically set their own requirements aside minus the uh, financial regulatory reform and the Basel III system. They can basically set their own system aside with a buffer zone, which is more uh, kind of like a second buffer zone added to the system. But they don't have to, they don't have to announce what the, that is. That's just between the bank. So, you know, why would the bank want to even have an increased capital reserve requirement if if they didn't need to, you know, or if, if they're not being forced to, I should say. You know, they're not going to do it. So I wanted to bring some of this to your attention, if anything. Um, so look up Basel III, research about that. Also uh, research about uh, option uh, A and B, Alte Verde loans, which are interest rate sensitive mortgage loans. Uh, there's also commercial in that too. Um, coupled with the new wave and the second wave of the financial crisis that's going to hit us. Um, at that point in time, um, you know, is the Fed going to be able to prop up and monetize treasuries at that point in time? They're going to be stretched too thin because if they don't intervene in that second major wave, of these interest rate sensitive loans, the floor is going to drop right out and we're going to be twice as bad as where we first started out at the end, technically at the end of 2007, but publicly at the end of 2008. It's going to be twice as bad because of all the stimulus, propping up, monetization, quantitative easing, all these other different financial wonderful vehicles they did. It's just going to be twice, it's just going to be twice, uh, if not three times as bad. Um, and are they going to want to? Stand the treasury market. If they don't, guess what? That's where three or four times worse comes from because the bond bubble is going to burst. And you think uh, 2007, 2008 was bad. <laughs> you don't know anything yet. So just get your gears flowing. Get your wheels flowing in your head with some of the stuff I said there. Um, look forward to your comments on that. And uh, just wanted to update my channel real quick with uh, some things I've been looking up on and so forth. So, um, uh, what other announcements I got? Uh, this um, this Sunday, um, we will not have the radio show because I will be in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, you know, attending, watching the uh, the Super Bowl in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, I know the the Super Bowl is in uh, Arlington, Texas. Um, but I'll have uh, some footage, so let me know what you think. Uh, if, if you're interested in seeing you know, some footage and so forth of that, either way, I'm going to post some YouTube content from that. So i got friends and family um, that live out of state that you know want to see uh, Lambeau Field and so forth. So um, either way, I'll do it. Um, I'll just, just pay attention to the titles when the time comes because I don't want to have you know, hear people you know, pissing and moaning and saying, oh, I, football, or I'm not going to see football. So I'm going to...
title it. So if you don't want to watch it, just don't watch it. It's, it's that simple. So, um, but that's it. That's a lot of the stuff I'm thinking of at this point in time. Um, Y'all take care and uh, read up on that stuff. Okay. Talk to you later.